Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI. I'm here with Don Liuzzi, Principal Timpani of the Philadelphia Orchestra. Hi, Don. How are you doing, Susan? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> Strange times. Yeah. Don, you've also been very involved in music education. You teach at Curtis and you were music director and conductor of the All City Orchestra in Philadelphia for 10 years. Yes, that's right. And uh, I treasured those years and still do, actually. Um, I'm still, uh, I help Joe out a little bit now if, if they need a conductor for a concerto or for a rehearsal that he can't do. But that's, that's my role now. It's not, not, nothing official. Well, this summer, I gather, it's the second year of the All City Orchestra Summer Academy, a music camp that's two weeks. Right. It was held last year at the Mann Music Center. Yep, that was a dream of ours that Joe and I have been having for a long time. Every day was packed. We'd start at uh, 9 a.m. and have sectionals with Philly Orchestra members and school district teachers uh, helping out from 9 to like 10, 20. Then we'd, those of us in the orchestra who were, who were in these sectionals, we'd run upstairs, rehearse from 10.30 to 1. And then, uh, and then there was usually a rehearsal, full orchestra rehearsal at 1.15 that Joe and I were active in. So this summer is obviously very different. Um, how is the program adapted? And what is your role this summer? My role this summer, um, and, and that of Joe, is really we are, we're being our sectional coaches, um, doing master classes and sectionals, like last summer, but just it's all on Zoom. There's the first block, which is like a sectional. The second block is a master class. The third block is a... Um, kind of instructional exploring with, uh, I think, uh, both composition, experimenting with composition as well. Oh, we then actually help in making the video, the final video with Yannick conducting, which is uh, gonna be of a very fun activity. <laughs> so that's one of the big added features this summer is technology and learning how to use it. Absolutely. You know, it's, we're really, I mean, in a way <laughs> it's, it's, in some ways, it's going to be more instructional. I hate to say that because being virtual is, uh, you do miss a lot by just having that immediate personal interaction. But um, the fact that we're really going to be focusing on how to play with a click track, how to actually make a visual and audio recording as best as they can from their homes. And, uh, and then like the work with WRTI, actually, <laughs> what it's like to to produce a, a radio and to actually um, the workings of media with, um, with our activity at, at this summer. It's, it's a whole nother avenue that in some ways is gonna be, I think, richer than, um, than what we had last summer. And well, definitely it will prepare kids for this summer and beyond because yeah. the whole world is changing. Yeah, exactly. Boy, is the world changing. And it's, and it's not going to go back to the old way anytime soon. In fact, um, I think, well, our work with the Philadelphia Orchestra is, is going to reflect that. We're going to be doing much more streaming, uh, especially this next year, than actual live concerts. So um, this, in a way, is a prototype that, that students need to learn about. And um, unfortunately, it's the way that music is being made right now. Um, and there's so much to learn for it that the, the discipline of playing with a click track, following it, you're still going to follow a conductor. Yannick has pre recorded his conducting of uh, the Farandol from Bizet's La Lesienne. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's really, a, it's really a fun opportunity. And Yannick is his normal, joyful self. And, um, <laughs> and I think the kids will enjoy it. For people who don't know what a click track is, it seems as if the click track is at the center of this new way of making music. Could you describe what a click track is? And I gather it's something musicians have used for decades. Oh yeah. Or another. Whenever we do film, uh, film music and we have, they're showing the film at the, like the Mann Music Center or um, at our other summer venues or even in the Kimmel Center, often they provide a click track in our headset. Even though there's a conductor who's He's, he's got a computer screen in front of him that he's watching the movie go by with an actual click with, within the frames. 
and it's uh, it lights up as it, you know it's it's a, it's and it's an audio audio click as well, and this is a standard thing when you do when you're doing recording work, um, so in a way it's like real live um, training for life as a record a recording studio musician. Could you take us through the process of of how a click track is used? Actually, the first thing we did, and this is this is standard in this virtual realm right now when you're making videos that have to line up for the editors, we did a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. And then there's a clap with, within that, that kind of verbal click that Yannick claps. So the visually the clap and the sound are with this, count, this countdown. And then once that clap happens, then a click starts. Bum, 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 da, bum, bum, you know, the, the, the beginning of the, the Ferndale. Where's the music coming from in the very beginning? Well, there's no music. <laughs> so the, um, in our case, what we did was we had, we created the click track. That's the first step. Without and that, music. And, that, and that's, yes, and that's standard at any recording studio. All right, we have this piece that has so many bars with this, with a four four is the font. It's four four, four beats per per measure. With the, and there's a quarter note gets each beat, and uh, it's going to go on for let's say fifty bars. So you're going to have fifty times four beat four equals two hundred. You're going to have two hundred clicks that are going to be mapped out, and organized. So that you've created your your building block right there. Now what we've done um, if, with the All City orchestra of summer camp, summer academy, is the, the music teachers, the Philadelphia School District music teachers, and a few of us, Joe and myself, we helped out. We cre created a base of sound. We played our parts along with the click. And then we gave it to Yannick to conduct along too. So in a way, he's conducting duty. He is conducting sound. Sometimes when he does this with the Philadelphia Orchestra, he'll have a pianist in his home studio who is playing along. So our sound is a, is a means of bass for not only Yannick to conduct to, because he didn't have a pianist for, for his recording, um, is that we'll also provide a bass for the kids when they're studying the music to play along to. Now, hopefully, when we do the final edit of this whole thing, the kids' sound will be the sound. Right. And our, our recording that we did will be taken away. Right. So the click track is a way for them to practice. Yes, it. totally. In fact, we have, we have a click track that's the actual tempo that we want. And then we've done some slower tempos of click tracks. In the, so one of those blocks, especially I think that third block, we'll be talking about how to record and how to use the practice click track as well as the performance click track. And hopefully in the span of the two weeks, they'll improve their, their practice in the slow click tracks and the original, the, the final click track that we want. So the difference between when professional musicians um, such as the orchestra perform with a click track, they're performing with just a, a metronome sound Yes. Tape of a metronome sound without any music. Exactly. And in this case, the kids will have the music in the background so they will understand how the music works with the click track. Exactly. And, and then for the final performance, will they be playing with that? Will they be playing alongside that recording themselves separately? Or will they be playing with a separate click track without that, any music? That's a great question. In fact, uh, we've been having a little debate about this. I think what we're going to be doing at this point is um, we will do both. They can record with hearing the sound of us playing with the click track. And obviously it'll always, they'll be watching Yannick conduct because that was the point of it. We still want them to have the experience of watching a conductor, uh, even though it's virtual. But, um, and also Yannick is so joyful that it's fun. <laughs> From your point of view, what's the most difficult part of this and what's the easiest part and what's the most fun part? 
Wow. <laughs> That's a really good question. I think it's all difficult and all fun. <laughs> I think it's all everything because, I mean, look, playing along with a metronome is, is an activity in this place, a click track for this video that we're creating. That's a discipline that you always have to have as a musician. You have to learn how to play with a click. And that'll, that practice alone in these two weeks will make everybody grow uh, exponentially, really. Um, now, the fun of it will be to see if, can I play with, playing with the recording will be, make it easier. And it'll, the recording that we've done, the teachers, music teachers, and myself and Joe, it, it's, it's not a full orchestra because we only had, you know, it's a chamber, <laughs> a chamber orchestra version. So, uh, but it was enough for Yannick to feel comfortable conducting to. So, I mean, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be both fun and a discipline. And that's, you know, actually, uh, that's the great thing about music. The discipline of practicing in any way with a metronome should be fun. I, I've, I've come to enjoy that over the years. At first it was like, man, this metronome is really getting in the way of me playing. But when you learn how to structure your time, you, you, the, measuring how you play and fitting in to that, that click and that, that metronome, um, there's a freedom, ultimately a freedom in that. And is there any issue with phrasing and expression? I guess to some extent, that's what, are you losing anything in that with these virtual performances? Well, I would hope not. I mean, that's going to be one of the challenges of us as teachers is to realize that you can play a, a phrase, a musical phrase, um, a melody and a, and a long phrase and give it shape, but still have the underpinning of secure time. These virtual performances that we'll see with, with all of the kids on the screen at the same time playing this piece of music is that's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it'll be, they're gonna be blown away when they hear, hear and see this at the end of the two weeks. This sounds like an amazing camp that you've put together, congratulations. No, we're really grateful, both to the Man Music Center, I, and Joe and I are extremely grateful that the orchestra, uh, Philly Orchestra has, has embraced this so much, and, and the school district is really playing a huge role. I mean, they're providing, uh, the basic teaching in these uh, these first blocks, they're doing the the, uh, the grunt work uh, of helping these kids learn how to play. Right. Yeah. Can I ask you one last question? You have this fantastic professional career, and you play at the highest levels. What drives you to be involved in education in the Philadelphia School District? You know, I I moved here at the end of my junior year of high school. Um, to Philadelphia from having grown up in the Boston area with lots of opportunities, uh, you know, a decent music program in the town, the suburb, suburban town I grew up in and the Greater Boston Youth Orchestra and the Massachusetts Youth Wind Ensemble. I mean, there's all kinds of groups and I had lots of great experiences. And when I moved to Philly, um, you know, we moved the summer right after my junior year of high school and I was we didn't know where we were going to live, whether it was going to be a suburb or in the city. And we happened to, the first day we moved to Philadelphia, we, we were staying at my grandmother's and, and we opened up the Enquirer and there was like an, an article that day of a performing arts high school starting in the city of Philadelphia at the Franklin Learning Center. Now this was before Kappa. And so my dad and I said, hey, you know, and call this number for an audition. And so all of a sudden, we're going to buy a, a house in the city and we're not going to stay in the suburbs because of this opportunity. And that year in the Franklin Learning Center and then also in the All City Orchestra, it was my musical home. And I, it was such a rich final year of uh, high school. It was, I wouldn't give that year away for anything. And All City was my musical home. And I feel like giving back to the place which gave so much to me that year. I got to play French horn as in the uh, orchestra. I was playing percussion in the, in the all city band. And um, I made some friendships that I still have today from that, that year. Um, it was integrated. 
I love the idea of being in an orchestra where there were more than, <laughs> more than half the orchestra was folks of a different color than me. And, um, and that was, an, uh, was a joy. And that's the kind of joy that I would, I, this world needs. I mean, it's begging for that kind of integration, true integration. And an orchestra can provide that. That's great. Wow. Well, and it's, it's great for you to be able to show these kids a vision of the future. Um, yeah, I, that's my hope. I, um, I still have dreams to help all city you know, survive and thrive even more. Thanks so much, Don Liuzzi. Yep. See you, Susan. Okay.